We're fighting for the additional capacity for a hospital system that the president moved very quickly, and I applauded him for it, and he brought the Army Corps of Engineers, and he brought them up to build the Javits Center capacity, 2,500 beds. He's wrong that it hasn't been used. About 800 people have gone through Javits. Uh, to dismiss 800 people is uh, disrespectful. Uh, but we didn't use 2,500 beds because we didn't reach the capacity. When he says, well, we built it, we didn't need it, it sounds like a uh, suggestion is, well, it was a request by the state that wasn't valid. If he didn't really believe 2,500 beds was necessary, uh, I don't believe the federal government would have helped build, build 2,500 beds. Uh, and the, the number came from a projection from him, him. See, he should read the reports he issues. The White House Coronavirus Task Force had enormous, projected in the millions of people. The CDC, which is the president, projected in the millions of people. So the projections were high. They were the president's projections. So for him to say to anyone, well, you relied on projections and the projections were wrong, they're your projections, Mr. President. So were we foolish? for relying on your projections, Mr. President? CDC, Coronavirus White House Task Force, that's you, White House, that's you. We relied on your projections. Okay, shouldn't have relied on your projections. Actually, I think the President has a better argument, which is, yes, we built 2,500 beds because the projections said it could get that bad, and because we worked together, we flattened the curve and we didn't hit the projection, which is actually what happened. But don't suggest that anyone made a mistake relying on your projections or on Cornell, Columbia, McKinsey, et cetera. Uh, second, I have said a number of it's times, 23 I don't hours. know what am I supposed to do, send a bouquet of flowers? They were very helpful on Javits. They were very helpful on sending the U.S. Navy ship Comfort. Uh, they were very helpful in intervening with China and getting PPE equipment out of China. Uh, they were very helpful in helping us find ventilators. I said thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, going forward, we're still in the midst of it. Uh, the president doesn't want to help on testing. He said 11 times. I said the one issue we need help with is testing. He said 11 times, I don't want to get involved in testing. It's too complicated. It's too hard. I know it's too complicated and it's too hard. That's why we need you to help. I can't do an international supply chain. Uh, he wants to say, well, I did enough. Yeah, none of us have done enough. We haven't, because it's not over. So yes, thank you for the Javits. Thank you for the US Navy ship Comfort. But it's not over. We have a lot more to do. And no one can take the posture, well, just say thank you for what I've done, and I'm now out. I'm not doing anything else. I've done my part. What if I said to the people of my state, OK, I'm done. By the way, I saved hundreds of thousands of lives, I flattened the curve, I created more hospital beds than anyone ever imagined, I coordinated the entire state, I'm done. I'm done, I'm going home. I'm gonna go see my mother, I'm gonna spend time with my kids, and I'm gonna go out fishing in Connecticut because their marinas are open. Uh, that's it, I'm done. What if I said that? That's what he's saying, I'm done. I don't wanna help on testing, testing is too hard. And then, the only thing he's doing, let's be honest, well, it's up to the states to do reopen. By the way, it was always up, up to the states. What are you going to grant me what the Constitution gave me before you were born? 
It's called the Tenth Amendment. I didn't need the President of the United States to tell me that I'm governor. And I didn't need the President of the United States to tell me uh, the powers of a state. People did that. Alexander Hamilton, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, uh, they are the ones who gave me the power. And I don't need the President of the United States to read the Constitution for me. Maybe he should have read the Constitution before he said he had the power to open the states, where he did a very graceful 180, and many people allowed him to do the graceful 180. But uh, so he now says it's up to the governors, which he said repeatedly now, yesterday, version of yesterday. And now it's up to the governors to reopen. Okay, I'm going to reopen. I get it. And you don't want to help on testing, which is a national problem and replicates the same chaos that you created with medical supplies because FEMA wasn't ready. By the way, I needed a stockpile. Where was your stockpile? 10,000 ventilators for the nation? That was your stockpile? Where your projections, the federal projections said they would need double the hospital capacity of this nation. Think about that. The CDC says double the hospital capacity of the nation. The minimum projection was 2.4 million hospital beds. You know how many hospital beds we have in this nation? 900,000. His projection says 2.4 million hospital beds. The whole hospital system is only 900, and his stockpile has 10,000 ventilators. You were ready with your stockpile? Didn't you read your own CDC projection? Didn't you read your own coronavirus protection? So thank you again, Mr. President, for the Javits. Thank you for the, coronavirus, uh, for the uh, US Navy ship Comfort, which, by the way, is just doing your job as president. It's not really thank you like you wrote a check yourself, but thank you uh, for that. We're not out of the woods. We have to go forward. We need help on testing, and we need funding. It's up to the governors. It's up to the states. We'll then provide the funding. No, they only want to pass a bill that funds their small business fund called PPE this small business program. We need to fund the small business program. But you're going to say, after just saying this monumental task is up to the individual governors and the individual states, I'm providing no help, no assistance, no financial money. I understand that small businesses need the funding. By the way, I know that airlines need a bailout, but not the states. Why don't you show as much consideration to states as you did to your big businesses and to your airlines? Right? Okay, did you guys speak yesterday or this morning after he no. announced the May 1st? No, you haven't talked at all. After he announced the May what? I'm sorry? After he announced the May 1st um, reopening of. of no, the he country. didn't announce anything. He said it's up to the states. That's what he said. And if you say it's up to the states, and you just hold up a big microphone that can listen to all the governors, you'll hear some governors say, I can start to reopen right away. Because some governors are in places where they don't have a serious problem. They never did. By the way, some states never even closed down. So if you're in a state that has a de minimis issue, yeah, then you can open up faster. You can open up tomorrow. Or you can start opening up tomorrow. He's doing nothing. He said it's up to the states. It's up to the governors, which is what it always was, because it's always been the governor's power. And then he says, this is a 50-piece puzzle. No, no, no. That's called the map of the United States. It's not a puzzle. Uh, and those lines are called states. And those states have constitutional power. 
remember the way this whole thing starts, the colonies create the federal government, not the other way around. So introduction to constitutional theory and policy. The states have the power to open. The states are opening on their own timelines. We're trying to coordinate with our neighboring states. Western states are coordinating. Middle states are coordinating. All he's doing is uh, walking in front of the parade, but he has nothing to do with the timing of the parade, right? The governors are going to open when they think they should open. All I'm saying is there's two things they need help from. They need help from the federal government. Two things. Help on testing, because states can't do that, and I don't want to redo the mayhem of the PP debacle. Second point, we need funding to do it. And the way you love talking about how you funded everything, big businesses are all getting bailed out, airlines are getting bailed out, bail out, bail out, bail out, all with taxpayers' money. State governments, which are the only ones who are doing this whole reopening, they're going to need funding, right? And well, show gratitude. How many times do you want me to say thank you? But I'm saying thank you for doing your job. This was your role as president, OK? Uh, so that's the honest statement of fact. Without politics, I'm not running for anything. I have no agenda but delivering for the people of this state and without ego. You want me to say thank you? Thank you for doing your job in helping build Javits and sending the US Navy ship Comfort. Thank you for participating in a modicum of federal responsibility in a national crisis, which you know is a national crisis because he declared a federal emergency. So thank you for having the federal government participate in a federal emergency. Uh, and thank you for help building Javits, 2,500 beds, pursuant to your projection. Your projection. And if you don't agree with your projection, fire the head of the CDC fire the White House Coronavirus Task Force people because they did the projections. In case he forgot or didn't read his CDC report, just to be precise, March 13th, March 13th, so we're well into it, CDC says, 160 to 214 million Americans infected. That's over half the population, CDC. 2.4 million to 21 million Americans hospitalized. 2.4 million, bottom number, 21 million Americans hospitalized. March 13th, the CDC. 2.4, okay? Let's say their low number, 2.4 to 21, which is a hell of a differential, right? Either 2.4 or 10 times 2.4. Thank you for that great projection. But anyway, let's take their minimum number, 2.4. How many hospital beds do you have? 900, call it a million. So it's two and a half times what your capacity is, right? We're the state of New York, we have a 50,000 bed capacity. By their projections, what do we need? 150,000 beds. By the way, what did McKinsey say that we needed? 140,000 beds. They got it from the CDC, as it says on the screen. They got it from the CDC. That's why we built 2,500 beds at Javits, because we listened to you, Mr. President. 
And if we were foolish for listening to you, then shame on us. Uh, but read your own report next time before you criticize it. Point on state spending. Uh, you mentioned at some point someone's going to come knocking. Does that mean at some point the state might have to cut off state spending? And what would that even look like? Rob? So right now we're looking at our cash numbers, our priorities, right, are making payrolls, making sure we're funding Medicaid, making sure we're funding the pandemic. Uh, we have the resources to do that, but we're putting in place cash spending controls to make sure that we can do that, especially because of the delays in the tax filing dates. So because that moved from uh, April 15th to July 15th, number of people that filed uh, by April 15th was 7 million, when we usually get about 10 million uh, who would file. That's about 30% 30, 30 off. Those that filed are probably getting refunds. So the ones that didn't file are most of that revenue. So we anticipate all that revenue is going to move to July. We'll be off about 10 billion in cash flow. So we're going to put in place spending controls actively right now to make sure that we can continue on a cash basis. We will have to make reductions. As the governor has said multiple times, we have a revenue shortfall even after the cash flow decline of between 10 and $15 billion. Uh, we'll put out a financial plan that reflects that, and then we'll have to make reductions in the event that there is not federal revenue. New York City put out their budget yesterday. They were projecting a revenue shortfall of $7 billion. Right? Again, ours looks like it could be up to double that number. And in the absence of additional federal revenue, then we will have to make those reductions. And that's consistent with other, what other large states are, are seeing. Excuse me, for, excuse me a second. Excuse me a second, Jimmy. You asked the question, right? We said we're going to let people have a chance. Uh, Gareth, do me a favor. Can you put up the uh, White House coronavirus projection just so the president can read what he said? Uh, who didn't, where were we up to, Joseph? their loved ones out of these facilities because conditions have gotten so bad. Is it advisable to do that at this point? And what more could the state do to make sure that the situation doesn't get worse? Dr. Zucker? Sure. So we are doing three different things there. We're working on the issues of making sure that they have the necessary equipment, they, all the PPs, when they ask, we provide it to them. Uh, we are also increasing on the issue of testing, uh, and we're also increasing staffing. And I think that's the three most important things. And if there's any questions, we address that. We also have something called um, a uh, COVIDio, which is an actually a virtual way to go through the nursing homes and to look to make sure that all the necessary things are being done, the proper ways of doing hand washing is happening, the proper ways of putting a gown on, taking off a gown is happening, whatever we need to do to help those individuals in the nursing home. Where is that equipment and staff coming from if we have shortages of PPE in hospitals already? We, we, have, we have staff, we have, um, uh, obviously there are volunteers that, that we have worked with uh, as well in the big pool of volunteers, but we're working with each individual nursing home to address that. Is that coming off the tent? Did you finish, Josefa? Well, where is the, PP, the extra PPE coming from? Uh, uh, well, if we, we contact them if there's need for PPE. We, look, we have uh, uh, stockpiles, we have uh, supplies that we have, and obviously masks and other equipment as well. Is that all information all coming off your April 10th directive? Is there a newer one than that to the nursing homes? There's the April 10th directive. That's is that correct. the latest one? I think that's the latest one. Okay. This is, excuse me one second. This is the, you saw the CDC projections. This is the federal government's White House Coronavirus Task Force, January, February, March 3rd, uh, 31st of the projections, 1.5 to 2.2 million deaths without mitigation, 100 to 240 best case scenario. That's the president's projections. So Mr. President, if you want to point fingers, which I think is a mistake, uh, you're in the middle of the game, it's only halftime, don't be a Monday morning quarterback at halftime, never works out well. And if you want to point fingers, we, we uh, built more beds than we needed. Our only mistake was then believing your numbers and believing your projections. Uh, if that was a mistake, then I'm guilty. Uh, but uh, I thought New York State relying on what you said would have been a safe assumption.
I won't make that mistake again. Uh, and it was your CDC and your White House Coronavirus Task Force that made those projections. Governor. Who didn't ask your question? Sir. Governor, you said it earlier that it's undeniable that certain states have fewer uh, cases than others, and therefore it's logical to reopen some states earlier. Along those lines, I think Ann is going to pursue this earlier. I'm not sure I heard an answer. Is it possible, is it likely, are you considering opening up certain parts of upstate New York before New York City? That, my friend, is a good question. I think it's logical to think a reopening plan would take into consideration the differential in infection rates and overall hospitalization rate. It is a metaphor for the nation, right? Certain states now have a much different problem than other states. If you have less of a problem, you can reopen faster. That's essentially true. Uh, and if you're in one state and parts of the state are in a different situation than other parts of the state, why can't those parts of the state open sooner? I think they can. How much sooner, when, how do you do it, how do you phase it in, how do you do it in a way that doesn't complicate or compete with the other parts of the state that aren't doing it, now you start to get granular and it starts to get tricky. And that's what we have to work through. But the overall premise, I agree. Uh, and then you watch that infection rate. And you do have parts of the state that are in a fundamentally different situation than downstate. Now, even those counties that are in a different situation, because remember, a county, if you're looking for a region to open, because a county sometimes is hard, but if you're looking for a region, you don't really have regions in the state that have been immune, because nobody's immune. So you'll see pockets in almost every region. You know, you talk about Western New York or Central New York and Mohawk Valley, you'll see pockets in every region. You can find a county that is in a different situation. But what we have to think through is even if you started to, if you did that, if you said, okay, that county starts to open up, what happens to all that pent-up demand from the rest of the state of people who are dying to get out of their house? And would you create inadvertently a problem for that place where you'd see all sorts of people descending there because that's now opened, right? Uh, the first barber shop to open, you know, there's going to be a line going out the door. The first hair salon to open, right? The first. Uh, we were literally on the phone with my colleagues, marina to open, you know, it's gonna, so that has to be thought through and that has to be coordinated. And we are on the cusp. We have to start to deal with these issues, but we're just coming out of, we're still in the midst of a public health crisis. And just because the numbers are flattening, you know, let's not take our eye off the ball. Can you put up the Navarro memo just for kicks, just to make sure, CDC, Coronavirus Task Force, and Mr. Peter Navarro's memo to the president, which the president said he never read. Peter Navarro says 100 million Amer Americans could be infected. As many as one to two million souls could be lost. So whose projections were wrong? Head of the CDC, Peter Navarro, and uh, head of the White House Corona Task Force. Fire them all. That's what I say. Fire them. You know the show with the, what the president did? You're fired. If he wants to fire someone for projections, retake his TV career, those are the three documented. So if he wants to blame someone for the projections, blame the CDC, Peter Navarro, and uh, whoever's on the Coronavirus Task Force, because it's their projections. Can you explain a little bit about why? Peter Navarro, you can fire. Can you explain a little bit why this got under your skin today? You obviously are uh, not pleased with what the president said. No, no, it's what he said. But why, why this particular criticism? You guys have traded, traded barbs in the past. Well, yeah, well, this is an important moment. He's saying, he doesn't want to provide funding to the states, and he doesn't want to help on testing. 
and I can tell you the states can't do it otherwise. And if this testing doesn't work, that's a serious problem. I don't care about his politics, uh, but if we don't have federal help on testing, that's a real problem. And I'm not going to go through the chaos that was created last time on PPE, where uh, people who were genuine heroes couldn't get PPE uh, because uh, there was a lack of coordination and because everything was made in China. We're looking at that situation with testing again. I can tell you that. I know enough to know that. Who didn't ask a question? You, you have the last one. Um, what types of businesses do you see being able to open their doors first when we do start to reopen restaurants? Would it be hair salons maybe limiting the capacity? What specific types of businesses? Yeah, we're not there yet. That's what we have to work through. Where, what, and when. Where, what, and when. Thank you, guys. I'm going to work.